It is a privilege to do living room time with someone who's been a spiritual life coach for over a decade. But my first question has to be, what is behind the name Punky Tolson? Oh. Did your mom name you Punky? Not my mom, I didn't and thank that. you for asking, but it was my dad. And oh. with my mom's approval, um, my daddy started calling me Punky when I was probably a week old, when I came home from the hospital after my mom had had me. And uh, my aunt had a friend named Punky when she was growing up. And daddy always thought that that was such a cute name and such a cute girl. And so with my mom's blessing, of course, Karen became Punky. Oh, it's cute. So, well, thank you. I always say it's Greek for God loves you, but I'm his favorite. So, <laughs> which it's not, but that's what I say. <laughs> but, okay, my next question has to be, how did you stay single until the age of 43? Oh, wow, that's a good question. And I have to say it wasn't something I did intentionally and that the Lord really had a grip on me. Um, and having surrendered my life to him, early on and then taking some wrong, very, very wrong uh, roads along the way, he still kept a grip, a grip on me and, and knew all along what he had planned for me and did not give me what I begged him for for years and till I finally just said, okay, Lord, more than what I want, I want what you want for me. And if staying single is your best for me, then I want it. And it was about four years later that I met my husband and we married a year later so, and, that, and I was 43 when I married him. So as I say, it's, it wasn't something I did intentionally, Moira, but boy, am I glad that God loved me enough to say no, because sometimes his no is, a, mercy. is a big mercy, a great mercy because he's got a better yes for us. Mm. So, well, now you've just skipped over some things. Yeah. Uh, it, it was young life ministry mm. to you yes. in high school mm -hmm. that uh, got to your heart. Mm -hmm. But, and, and I know there'll be parents who will be encouraged because here you are today, there was a wandering. Definitely. What, mm -hmm. You actually say that if, if there'd been someone to come alongside you mm -hmm. and, and mentor you, which is what you do now. Yes. Uh, it, the story might have been different. Yes, and I believe very strongly in that, that we have to have someone come alongside us. And as you said, I did officially make Jesus my Savior through Young Life, made all sorts of promises to the Lord at that time, got out of high school, got into college, broke every single one of those promises within the first year. So the greatest sins of my life, if you will, I committed after I said yes to Jesus, and I was the one that cheated. But yes, I, I, I definitely made that decision and um, took those wrong choices, um, took those wrong roads. Um, I had people that were encouraging me along the way, but I didn't have that one someone who came alongside, put their arm around me and said, okay, now that you've said yes to Jesus, let me help you grow up in your faith and help me to lay a foundation of my faith. And really, um, what I like to say is figure out how to do life by way of the Bible, because I think that's really what a lot of people want to know. They know what the Bible says, or they've gone to Bible studies, but how does it really work in how my life? How do you life? walk it out? How do you walk it out? What does it look like when it's dressed up on a real woman in 2014? How do I, how do I date, you know, in this culture, in this day and age, and do it Jesus's way? How do I, how do I disagree with my husband, have a squabble, you know, in my marriage? How do I deal with a cancer diagnosis or whatever it is? And um, I think we just all need help and help has a name and his name is Jesus, but he has put us on this earth to come alongside. You know, when we come to Christ, we're, we're spiritual infants. And so you would no more put an infant that you gave birth to behind the wheel of a car. And so the same thing is with um, spiritual infants. They need someone to help them grow up, come alongside, adopt them, if you will, yes. and be a spiritual mom or a spiritual dad. And I, I bless those who were influences in my life, but I, I do agree that we need someone to come alongside us. And if I had had that person, Moira, I may not have made those choices. But you might not be doing marriage seminars Absolutely. with your husband. You might not have founded uh, Women at the Well, an interdenominational Bible study in Dallas, Texas. You, you might not be that person who lives right. to come alongside right. believers who need to grow in their faith. Now, it's not like you sank into a deep pit, um, at least outwardly. Mm -hmm. you, you were in the movies. <laughs> you, were, you were a model. You were an actress. You were in... Uh, 
something to talk about with Julia Roberts. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, all of that, and that all looked good on the outside, yeah. but on the inside, you can be an absolute train wreck. You mm. can dress it up real good, but inside, if there's a train wreck going on, it's still a train wreck, and it's going to take place sooner or later in a big way, and it did in my life. And all of those things, Moira, I, were, were good things, and God certainly uses everything. He doesn't waste Not a, thing. a cotton picking thing in our life. He uses it all. And so all of that plays into where I am today. You're absolutely right. I probably wouldn't be doing the things that I'm doing had I not had that path. And he redeemed it all. But um, yeah, the, the, um, the train wreck was still going on inside. And I got to a point in my life after trying to satisfy that God-shaped void with all of those things, mm -hmm. I finally just got to the end of myself. You hear a lot of people say, you got to come to the end of yourself. And for me, I was just flat out worn out with trying to drive this thing myself. And one night I was face down on the hardwood floor of my bedroom and I just said, Lord, I give up. And I always say those are the three words that saved my life and set me free. And I mean to tell you, I just said, if you if you can be who you say you can be and you can do what you can say you can do in my life and you love me the way that you say you do, then come on in and take the wheel because I am tired of this. I'm jumping in the back seat and you drive. And I, at that point, had fallen in love with men in trying to satisfy that void in my life. And I just said, I want to fall in love with you. You're the only man I haven't tried to fall in love with and I want to fall in love with you. And that began just a beautiful dance with the Lord. Mm. And look what he has done since. Mm. 2001, you married John. 2003, yes. you began a discipleship ministry. Yes. Uh, with your husband. Mm -hmm. But 2009, yeah. a Mack truck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not the phone call we want to get. Um, I found a lump in my breast, went to the doctor, really wasn't concerned about it. And... Um, Lo and behold, it was breast cancer, and no one in my family had had it, so I was the pioneer in my family. Um, ended up um, having a double mastectomy and reconstruction and chemo, lost my hair, all that. And, um, you know, anybody that gets that phone call, um, it, it's a shocker. And, and I will tell you that I had followed the Lord for a long time. I had a lot of scripture that I had hidden in my heart and hidden in my mind. Um, but when I got that diagnosis, I was scared. And I don't want anybody to think that it's not a scary thing because it can be a really scary thing. But somewhere in, you know, in my heart, I knew that God was in control of this. And, and I just surrendered it. And I said, okay, Lord, um, if we're gonna do this, then let's, let's get it all done. If, if we're gonna do the cancer thing, then if there's anything else in here that needs to be cleaned out, that it needs to be refined in me, then let's do it because I don't want to miss one single lesson. So of you were you giving him me. your heart. I was giving him my heart. And the funny thing is, is I made a joke to my friends that, well, I'm getting a new breastplate of righteousness and you know, oh, laughing wow. about it. Oh, I love and, it. And I, but the Lord said, and what exactly is that breastplate of righteousness covering up? And what does it shield? Our heart. And I knew that the Lord wanted to do some heart work in me. And he did. And I said, I do not want to be the same girl coming out of this that I was going into it. So help me make the most of right now and learn everything you have for me. And at the year anniversary of that diagnosis, my breast surgeon, who's a, a strong believer, said, okay, what have you learned? What's the biggest thing you've learned? And I said, I have learned, gets me choked up, how sweet God is. And I would have missed that had he, had he not allowed this to touch me. And uh, a friend of mine had said, uh, after she heard I was diagnosed, my goodness, the Lord must love you so much to trust you with something so important. And I think that's the perspective we have to have on whether it's a cancer diagnosis um, or anything that we struggle with is, okay, God who loves me looked at this a long time ago and said, you know what, I will allow this to touch her life or to touch his life because I've got a profound purpose to come out of this that is for her good, for the good of all of those around her watching it, and for my great glory. Mm -hmm. And when we get that perspective on what it is, um, we can see that sometimes God's most beautiful gifts, um, most life-changing gifts, gifts come wrapped in some really 
horrible looking paper. Papers. Yes, yes, absolutely. Oh. So we have a picture of you, uh -huh. Maria, an encouraging hug from your husband, yeah. Dr. Aww. John, right yes. there. Yes, and, and sometimes this is the hardest thing for women losing their hair. Yeah. Um, I had a ton of hair, more. <laughs> I had a lot of hair to lose, um, and it never did make the full comeback we were hoping for. But uh, you know that at the time was not. It didn't. Um, it didn't throw me. Um, it all of it was had an element of being difficult for a moment, but it just didn't throw me. I thought, you know what? I want to. I want to live this experience. I want to walk this out with the Lord, so that I can be an encouragement to someone else who's going through the same thing. Which is how He uses us, right? right. But um, it, uh, my stepson uh, had shaved his head just because he shaved his head. But um, we had pictures taken together. It was Cute. really funny, and um, said, "Now you can see the family resemblance. You know, <laughs> we're both bald." But um, it was kind of fun being bald for a while. And wigs are a great thing. So. You look great in a ball cap, too. We're going to see in the next Thank picture. You. I, I love the t-shirts you're wearing for uh, this race. Yeah. You, you, you made a conscious choice not to label yourself merely a survivor. Talk yes. about the t-shirts. Yes. Um, I, I really love these t-shirts, and they turned out really great. Um, you know, right after I was diagnosed, um, the Lord really gave me something to hold on to in His Word, and it was, we are more than conquerors, from Romans 8, 37. And um, when I thought about breast cancer survivor, I thought, well, at what point do you survive? Because the fact that I was laying on a table as this doctor was telling me, this looks like breast cancer, and I didn't just die of fright right then, I thought made me a survivor. So at what point are you a survivor? And then when I looked at that word survivor, it really means to be just alive, breathing, it's kept alive. Through. Yeah, just existing. And I, I, you know, there's something more to this, but more than a conqueror really means that we get the overwhelming victory in Christ. And I said, okay, Lord, I want all there is to this, and I want to be more than a conqueror, and I want women to know that they're not just survivors. Not, He didn't want us to just merely survive the thing. He wants us to get the overwhelming victory where we triumph. And so it's all about making the most of right now and not letting that thing take you down, admitting your fears, admitting whatever's going on with you, but saying, you know what, I'm following Christ in this. He's got a purpose for this, and I'm going to make it count. I'm going to make it count for His glory and for the good of everybody else around. So that's where that came from. Well, I would say you're not just looking at a survivor here, are you? No, you are looking at an overwhelming victor, conqueror. Mm. Come and see us again, Punky, will oh, you? Oh, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me.